Hello everybody, Captain VFC here with another build analysis video, aka a BAV. This is a style of video where rather than talk about every single component that I've glued together, I will show you the build in the background and talk about specific highlights or just the general building experience over the top. And for this episode, we are looking at the Airfix P40. Um, it is the relatively new tooling. The date has escaped my mind and will hopefully be appearing in front of you now. There is a build video. No, there's an unboxing video. Ah, this is the build video. See, I know what I'm doing. Professional. There is an unboxing video uh, that I did on this, which is on the channel, and the card for that should be above as well. So check that out to see what you get before you open it. Or before you open it? When you open it, I suppose both really, before you open it and then after you open it and then you see. Anyway, look, I've already just gone completely off track and we're not even a minute in. Okay, right, I've had a quick break, I've had a quick cup of tea, uh, I've sat down and let's get this professional content on the road. So this kit was made more or less as per the instructions, so I don't need to tell you every single part that was stuck together. Just follow the instructions, you cannot go wrong with this kit. The interior has been painted using Hataka Interior Green. And then the decal is being applied. I am not doing this as per the kit, as you'll have noticed from the thumbnail in terms of the, the decoration. And I'm not using the paint, even though this one is a starter set. I have made that before, but in this instance, I wanted something a little bit different. But anyway, once the interior is painted, everything is applied with this dark grey wash that I, I use as a standard wash. And then extra residue is wiped off. I am not somebody to airbrush interiors. I just don't see the point. You're not going to see it that well, especially on an aircraft of this size. So all of it is applied by brush. Now, one key thing to note the entire way through this construction, I'm sure I will undoubtedly mention it many, many times, is it basically makes itself. There are no fit problems that I can find. Well, um, uh, there are times you have to be aware of how you're fitting, but basically just dry fit the parts just test it before you go barreling in there and you're not going to have any problem but that is true of every kit so this one in particular i think is is just better now the interior is stuck to the uh, the floor and i've noticed that the floor oh it's, it's not a house is it no it's stuck to the wing the bottom wing i'm noticing this a lot more with airfix kits including the typhoon the tempest and the hurricane i'm not sure if i like it the reason why i say that uh, is it ends up with the control stick very, very vulnerable during the build. And I would advise of either not putting it in yet, and I'll tell you the point where you should put it in, or just take extra care, making sure you don't catch it on anything, such as, for example, the side of the fuselage. Now, I did glue mine in when it was recommended in the instructions. This is actually the fourth one of this kit that I've made, and I've broken them twice out of those four. But this one was already broken. It came off the sprue, snapped, and therefore... I didn't see the point. Normally, I, as I say, I'll show you where to put it in, uh, but um, in this instance, it really didn't matter. It was broken, and in case you're wondering, I think it is still broken. I don't think I ever remembered to glue the top back on, but I did keep it for a while. Anyway, wings can be assembled, and the entire aircraft can then kind of just be folded together. I have also been a little bit proactive and painted interior green for the uh, the wheel wells, the interior of the wheel well, but not all of it. And again, you will see why with a little bit of history a little bit later. Uh, and oh, looking at me clamp it as well. The uh, the machine guns in the wing are another thing that just they feel like they get in the way a little bit. There must be a better way, or I say a better way. There must be a way of making them where they're not so vulnerable. Because I think that is the key issue here. Is that uh, somebody like me is a little bit clumsy. I tend to sort of drop the kit down every now and again, and having protrusions like that well it doesn't feel particularly safe and of course you can see the uh, the radio antenna on the fuselage as well uh it's they've, they've clearly minimalized the number of parts that they want to have stuck on and the risk of that is you're just going to break it and as something sold as a gift set i feel that that might be a bit of an oversight but then maybe people uh, that are making this as a kit for the first time don't really mind that something's broken but that is certainly not the case for me uh, you're seeing here the wings are now being glued onto the fuselage and then the final component such as the chin intake or chin take is being stuck on as well as the um, uh, the louvres. Oh no, the cowl, cowl flaps. There we go, cowl flaps. Honestly, God, words escaping me today. And the propeller blade does spin if you assemble it correctly, which 
is by putting a little um, socket on the inside part. The inside part? Oh, oh you can't tell I've been at work all day, can you? But, uh, you Basically, you glue the hub together as it shows there, and then you, with the tweezers, like I'm doing here, just put the plug in uh, from the top before gluing the nose piece with the machine guns in. Uh, but as I've said, I've glossed over most of the building here. It is a very simple kit to assemble with just a few minor things that I think you should perhaps be aware of. One of them I'm about to get involved with here. That is uh, a little bit of excess plastic in between the machine guns and whatever that nose intake is. I'm not entirely sure what the nose intake is, actually. Uh, anyone that can let me know, please do. Um, it's uh, on the Allison engine versions. It's not on the Rolls-Royce engine versions. But yeah, there was just a little bit of excess plastic there. Not entirely sure why, but just remove that and be very careful with how you cut things off the sprue. Right, onto the painting then. And the main colours are, at first, spoilers, uh, being airbrushed on. We have Hataka RAF Sky or Sky Type S or whatever they call it. Thinned with a little bit of Hataka Thinner. And that is sprayed on. Now, I did not prime this kit. I will immediately tell myself off for doing so. I really should have primed the kit. On top of that, we have Hataka Dark Earth. Again, this is actually... Uh, formulated for brush painting so a little bit of attacker thinner in there as well and then that is sprayed on the top surfaces as a base for the green that will follow i have carefully taped around the fuselage band because it has a sky band now with that all done looking i think rather nice i didn't pre-shade it as such but i did deliberately reduce the flow a little bit be a bit more clever with my airbrushing and just try and get a bit more texture i decided the next thing to do would be to camouflage it with blue tack so marking out which bits are going to be brown and covering them up and then over spraying with the raf dark green now this did not go as planned firstly i absolutely hate masking it drives me mad uh, especially uniform plans this is not a uniform color this is a uh, camouflage pattern but i like to get it right and it is so long and drawn out and tedious but the main reason why it went wrong is this paint let me down once again shoved in the airbrush put in with a bit of thinner and it just clumped and blocked the airbrush so i resorted to getting the old paintbrush out and tried this the good old-fashioned way so i ripped off the blue tack and attempted to hand paint it and that as well was horrifically clumpy and lumpy despite being thinned this is not the first time that i've been let down by an ref dark green but it is the first time i've been let down like this by a hataka paint it is essentially unusable you can barely get out the bottle now and it is just clumps of solid uh, pigment and then some unmixed residue. I'm now going to send you back in time to listen to past captain's thoughts on the subject once I had finished painting the green. So, over to you, past captain. Okay, so we have a slight problem. Um, the brown paint, as you can see, has significantly flaked. I put blue tack on it to mask it. The green is also a problem. It is too gritty and grainy. It doesn't go through the airbrush. It just clogs it. You brush paint it and it ends up being this clumpy goo. It is not good. So I thought I'll brush paint the green because of the fact it won't go through the airbrush. And when I peeled the masking tape off, it just it's chipped all of the brown. And now the green is getting so bad it is not usable. It has, I don't know if you can necessarily see the definition here, it has smoothed out, it still looks a little bit patchy as you can see, it's had about two, maybe three thin coats, um, but on the tail it is still very gritty and grainy and not very good. And now I have this weird half airbrushed, half brush painted lumpy thing. Um, logically, all I can really do to get around it is redo the brown. I am not masking it again. I think it will just be brush painting the brown. I think. Just, it doesn't matter too much. I do have a plan B, which can potentially save this, but that is just super annoying. And it's partly chipped on the sky as well. You notice I didn't cover this side of the wing. There was a reason for that. Um, I, depending on my next action will depend on whether I... Um, uh, paint that plip, 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 plip. I'm so angry I've lost all my words as to whether I paint that uh, that this wing whether I paint that um, sky as well but that is thoroughly disappointing 
I have had slight problems with the Hataka paint chipping before, but never this bad. But, uh, yeah. Not great. Okay, so I opted to brush paint over the brown. So I lost a lot of that mottling, that kind of texture that I was originally going for. I lost that. However, I did end up with a much, much cleaner finish. And I also went over the sky because some of that had also been chipped and battered and then masked off a black wing. It should actually be a slight curve. At this point, I was just grateful the kit wasn't going in the bin. So, as I have mentioned, I will not be using the kit decals kit version. As you can see, it is painted in this colour here, which is uh, basically standard RAF. It is dark earth and dark green on top, sky on the bottom with a black starboard wing. That is because I have bought from AML the P40 Tomahawk Mark IIA over Evrup. Uh, yes, I know it's meant to be Europe, but uh, Evrup sounds funnier. It's actually the port wing that's black. Close enough. So with this you get three possibilities and you can make up to two of them. So you have the RAF one here, which it states is from 26 Squadron, 1941. This is actually a camera mounted P40. Obviously the Airfix kit doesn't have that. I've chosen to ignore that little fact. And then you have a Soviet one here, which is white. Now this is the same aircraft. And as you can see here, you actually only get enough markings for one of the two Soviet ones. But it's the same aircraft, the same basic camouflage pattern, but here it's obviously oversprayed in winter camo of white. I do intend to do a Soviet one, and of those, it will be the white one. However, I'm not ready for that yet. So the reason for this being in this colour is I'm doing the RF one. Um, so yeah, very basic, no stenciling. But they do look very nice, so I'm excited to see how well they go on. Prior to the actual application of the decals, the entire aircraft was given a coat of Vallejo gloss varnish. I know there are some people who say this is an unnecessary step, and I also know there are people who say this is an absolutely essential step. I personally prefer it. It makes it a lot easier to move the decals around, and uh, especially if the decals are not particularly good, good i find that it is better for the quality of them so for example i don't really know much about these decals as you know the quality and who prints them and whatever uh, therefore moving on a, a gloss surface a smooth surface is always going to be the better option over moving it on a rough matte surface so regardless of any silvering i always prefer to do it this way it also acts as a consistent base it's kind of a a sealer if you like but anyway to get the marks uh to get the underwing roundels in the correct place, I have measured because one of them, of course, has a yellow circle around it and they should be measured from the blue to the tip of the wing. I don't always measure it. I often eyeball it. But in this case, uh, I was now caring about this model more than I had done when it nearly went out the window. There are no stencils with this set. It is just the basic colours. So nice and easy. The same wash that I apply to the interior is then painted as a sort of panel liner. Um, I'm not a big fan of panel lining. I'm sure I'll do a video on why at some point. Uh, I do, however, like it when there's moving surfaces. So here, the flaps and uh, ailerons and elevators, for example, uh, can all be highlighted by use of the Citadel's uh, thingy that I was using, the Basilisk, uh, Basiliscanum Grey or whatever. And everything is then sealed with a coat of Vallejo matte varnish. And the other Vallejo colour that I use is the leather brown, which goes for the headrest. So... As you can see, I'm using more colours than the kit tells you to use because it's a starter set with only four paints and that is not particularly accurate. Um, final sundries like the undercarriage are then glued in and this is the point, by the way, I did say I'd mention it where I would recommend gluing the control column in. If you can very, very carefully get it in with some tweezers and glue it in now, then that is certainly much better for the life of it. Now, those 
eagle-eyed of you may notice that uh, the canvas on the wheel wells, I suppose I didn't even mention that they're canvas, but they are, the inside bit is canvas. So you've got a metallic floor at the top, which I painted interior green, and then you have a canvas strip. This is a how many times can I say canvas in one video moment, but anyway, a canvas strip around, which is mostly just a catch dust and things like that and on p40s that came out the factory in kind of a standard drab color which is why i used this hataka medium us green or medium 42 to um highlight that it's a little historical detail that you wouldn't necessarily know but painting it interior green just simply isn't correct on that note the canopy frames were assembled with clear fix now i've seen many people paint the interior here interior green as well as in behind the windows but they too were painted in standard camouflage now aircraft supplied to the raf in this color were painted in america so were usually a slightly different shade of green and brown because they were the ones that the americans had available rather than the ones being manufactured in the uk so strictly speaking you could say that i'm wrong and not pedantic enough by painting this in standard raf colors but hey whatever so there we go fun fact uh the bits behind the windows should always be exterior color when it's an early p40 and actually you can see that i was wrong earlier when i said i assembled down the carriage legs it was only the doors that i had assembled they're a little bit fiddly but this is where i actually assembled the legs i did them separately so that i could get in there and paint the interior green without the legs getting in the way um but now the legs can actually be assembled again very very simple as long as um you're careful as to which side you're using for which obviously port is port and starboard is starboard the instructions do tell you and then the final parts to be glued on were the um, exhausts which were painted along with the guns they were um, black so the guns were black and then gun metal over the top the exhausts were painted brown and then gun metal over the top and then assembled and then the black uh, walkways were added i would normally add those before varnishing however i completely forgot they existed and therefore painted them on now i think the instructions don't show them if i remember correctly uh, and i also only masked one side and not both because laziness but also it's a straight enough line it's it's good enough it will do finally then the two tiny bits of weathering that i did uh, one of them is shown here in the video the other one is not you have to wait until the end that is a small bit of chipping on the walkways with just a little bit of silver paint uh, which was applied on the end of a guitar string and I did also apply some smoke on the exhaust as well. Right then, so we've come to the end of the video where there will be a grand reveal of the aircraft. But first, I just want to shout out my channel members who help fund the channel. Uh, very much appreciated. If you'd like to join them, then please, you'd be very much welcome. But if you can't, that is also okay. However, if you're feeling like doing something for free, then by all means, please hit the like button, uh, notification bell, subscribe if you don't already. All very much appreciated. Thank you very much. OK, so as you saw, the paint really tested my patience on this one. Uh, but here is the end result. Overall, there are things that are wrong with this. It is not exactly what I was expecting. Um, the decals, I think, are a little undersized. They don't look quite right. This version is actually available as a standard release, standard release, as an included option on the 148th Airfix P40, and um, it doesn't quite match. And I do trust the uh, the Airfix one over was it AML, whoever these guys are. Uh, also, of course, as I mentioned, there is no camera window, but hey, we ignore things like that. I do think that the exhaust stains look quite good on it and they help liven it up. I think I may have gone a little bit overboard with some of the silver. It looks a bit bright, but hey, you never know. And I did also apply a little bit of a wash, a little bit of streak marks underneath where the guns are. So I did do a little bit of weathering, which I know is not very much like me. I'm usually too lazy. But what of the kit? Well, the kit is absolutely fine. It fits together nicely. You can chuck it together in a weekend as long as the paint doesn't fall off and you get a pretty good result at the end of it. Considering this is um, a Series 1 Airfix kit if you buy it on its own, or a very basic gift set that you can buy all over the place, you can't really go wrong. I think it's fantastic. I have just had a quick look on the Airfix website, so at time of recording, the standard version, which is an American P40, is $8.99, and the set version is $11.99. So really affordable kits, and one that I think everybody should at least have a go at if you're interested in... P40s. I mean, if you're not interested in P40s, have a go at it anyway. Push your comfort zones a little bit. Uh, very, very good. Uh, but let me know what you think. Have you made this kit? Did you like it? Did you have any fit issues? 
I mean, you shouldn't have done. I've made four of them, and one of them was a slight pain in the backside, and that was clearly my fault. And what do you think of the end result? Do you think I did the right thing by just brush painting over it, or should I have maybe dunked it in Detto and stripped it all down? Anyway, just just comment. Just chat. I, I like chatting in the comments. Let me know what you think. And thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, I will see you again another time. Oh, no. Uh, quick amendment. I never actually gave it a rating. I give it a solid 40 out of 10.